Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's. Want to make a few announcements before we get started. Um, we are doing a, a Fall Fest social distance back here on October 17. We'd love to have your help with that. So if you'd like to help volunteer, we still need some help. Uh, Kim Neller is running point on that. So you can talk to her about uh, our needs for that. Um, also today is Helen Banier Duzinski's 100th birthday. I was told she was a longtime member here, uh, now lives in Tom's River. Uh, anytime someone turns 100, we want to mention that. That's Helen E. Ban Banier Duzinski. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I could show you the spelling later. <laughs> Somebody texted me this, her 100th birthday, and she was baptized here as a baby. Uh, approximately 100 years ago. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, both, both youth groups are meeting tonight back here at 6 p.m. We'll, Jeff and I will figure out uh, how we'll rotate them through. But I, I heard there will be s'mores involved for both groups. So you want to come out for that. Uh, also tonight is, a, is our first deadline for the gift card orders that the youth group is doing the senior youth group is doing for uh, fundraising purposes for the mission trip. Uh, so it's, it's an easy way for you to support them. You buy gift cards to a plethora of stores that you probably already shop at. Uh, so just purchase those gift cards. We get a percentage of those, uh, that, that, that uh, gift back to us as a fundraiser. So uh, please do that. But every if you don't get it in today, it's okay. There'll be another deadline in two weeks where we'll put a, another order in. Uh, and so if you'd like to do that, you could see me and, and I could get you those, those forms. Um, also, about 30, 35 of you uh, downloaded uh, my first kind of extended into the text uh, Bible uh, teaching that I put up on a, a podcast in podcast form. Uh, so I'm going to continue to do that uh, each week where I'll take the text that I looked at here on Sunday morning and spend about 45 minutes uh, going a little deeper talking about uh, that scripture in a deeper way. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that. Um, also, uh, Pam wanted to talk about, we're going to bring back the soup swap. Uh, so we're, we're, oh, she's behind me. So talk about that a little bit. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, usually we start uh, our soup swap in October or November. And since we're having the Fall Festival on the 17th, we thought that would be a good kickoff for the Soup Swap. So um, what that is, if you don't know, is that if you'd like to volunteer to make soup, usually um, we ask for six quarts of soup and we have the containers, and then you can bring it that day or that morning or the day before, whatever is convenient, and then we will swap $5 for a quart of soup. So if anyone would like to make soup for the swap on the 17th during the festival, um, we will have containers after the service. Ethan will be glad to give you some. He's right there. So um, if you would like to do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. And with that, uh, let us prepare our hearts in worship with this morning's prelude.
O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Please stand and join us in singing, God of this city.
and fill us with your spirit, bringing refreshing, renewal, peace, and joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew our strength, and you promise to give us rest as we come to you. Forgive us for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independently of your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distance from your presence. Thank you that your ways are far greater than our ways and that your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous. You are close to the brokenhearted. You hear our prayers and you know our hearts. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured no matter what we're facing, your heart is towards us. Your eyes are over us and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as with a shield and we are safe in your care. We give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are holy and just. We will declare that your love stands firm forever for your loving kindness endures forever.
The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. But the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You can be seated. Now I'm going to go to our time of prayer. Uh, in your bulletin, you can see the prayer concerns of the church. If you have any to add, you're watching from home on uh, Facebook. You can drop those requests in our feed. Those of you that are here, you can let me know, and I'll add them to our prayer concerns. Do we have any prayer concerns here? All right. Let's now bow in prayer. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. God, we do lift up all those who are struggling uh, with COVID uh, and this pandemic, especially our national leaders uh, with our president and his wife, the first lady, and and all those surrounding him who are uh, with COVID now. God, I pray for grace and peace over them, that you'll heal them. And God, all those that continue to, to struggle, I know this is a reminder, uh, a cute reminder to all of us that the pandemic is still happening. And so, God, we pray for relief for those who are, are sick with COVID, those who are experiencing just depression or anxiety during this time. God, just meet them today. Give them peace. God, we lift up all those who are sick in our midst. God, we want to continue to lift up uh, my mother-in-law, Sandy. Uh, thank you that she has uh, is recovering at home now and out of the hospital. We got, God, we pray for continued healing over her. Uh, God, we pray for... Uh, Ralph and Peter and and Marianne and, and Ralph who are struggling with cancer and, and lupus and chronic disease. God, we just pray, uh, Father, for healing for them. We pray for just peace for the families. We pray for wisdom for the doctors uh, as they um, decipher and discern what's best treatments for them, God. God, we continue to lift up uh, Denise and thank you for uh, healing from her foot surgery, God, we pray a, a blessing over her today. Uh, God, we thank you for Marjorie and a successful uh, cataract surgery. And God, we pray for continued recovery, that you'll give her great eyesight uh, as a result of these surgeries she's had. Um, and God, we lift up just all those who are here, God. I pray we all have our burdens. We all have our stresses. We all have things that... Uh, you need to enter into in our life. And so, God, th those things, may you bring those to our minds now. May you give us um, the ability to, to see your love, to experience your love and grace in the midst of those. Hear our prayers, God of power, and through the ministry of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life and proclaim your saving deeds to all the world. Amen. I got it.
Um, we're now going to do a kid's sermon. The kids are going to go to Sunday school today after this with my wife, Kelly. Um, and so today's topic is the Ten Commandments. So I want to ask kids, what, what are some commandments mom and dad give you at home? Do you guys have any rules at home? Any? No rules? Just a free for all? What? You're not allowed to go on the front porch? Only with an adult, yeah. What other rules do you have? Meadow? You're not allowed to have a million people over. Oh, over here. What's up? What's your rule? Be kind to each other, yeah. What else? No fighting. Those are all good rules. Is there any other rules? Sarah? Oh, if you're on wheels, you need a helmet on. That's a good rule. So you're 18. Don't step on cereal when you drop it. Uh. <laughs> Zoe? got to go to bed, get your beauty sleep. Well, it sounds like all these rules are there for a reason. Why do you think th that the parents give us rules? Anybody have any ideas? Meadow? To stay safe, yeah. To protect you, because they love you. They want to teach you how to be uh, a normal human, right? That's caring, that's loving, that's kind. And so when we think about commandments in the Bible, it's similar. God gives us commands to protect us because he wants to, to show us what it means to be a normal, loving, kind human. And so rules aren't there to like make us feel bad or limit us or, or make us feel guilty or be legalistic. They're there to protect you, to show you how to love and care for others, okay? You guys got that? So when mom and dad give you rules, they're there for a good reason, okay? To listen and obey. That's my boy. Um, all right. So with that, let us, uh, let us say uh, the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, the kids, you guys can go to uh, your Sunday school. And as they do that, if... Everyone could stand and join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. You'll see I provided it for you in the bulletin so we all can follow along today. For those that don't have it memorized, let us say the, the Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. On the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing the Gloria together.
Hey Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we're now going to pray for this morning's offering. If you uh, have brought your offering, there's a little chest uh, back there that we ask you to, to drop it in. Uh, or you can continue to give online. And we thank you for your gifts uh, to support us here at St. Paul's. Uh, without your gifts, uh, we would not be able to turn lights on. Um, the heat's on in there, just not out here. Sorry about that. But the heat is on. Uh, and so thank you for that. And, and we give uh, not, about, not, a, now, not out of obligation, uh, but we give because Christ gave to us. And we give as an act of worship. And we know that where our treasure is, there our heart is also. And so we give to show God that we love him, that we are worshiping him even with our financial resources. And so it's an act of worship. That's why it's in worship. And so let us now pray for the gifts and the givers alike. God, we thank you uh, for each person who gives so faithfully here at St. Paul's. We thank you for the, the many gifts, those that give above and beyond, um, regularly given to, to provide for those struggling in our community, God, we, we thank you for that. We, we pray a blessing over them as well. God, we pray uh, for each gift that comes in. May we be great stewards of those resources. May we uh, use wisdom and discernment and how to use them here in our community. And may uh, your kingdom come here in Milltown as it is in heaven through the giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing uh, the doxology together. Today's uh, scripture reading is from Exodus chapter 20, 1 to 21, 10 commandments. Then God spoke to all these words, I am the Lord your God, you brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other God before me, you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for the Lord, I am your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the infinity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongfully use the name of the Lord our God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuse his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you have, you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord our God. You shall not do any work for you, for your son, your daughter, your maid or female slave or your livestock or alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated. 
honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord our God is you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor you shall not covet your neighbor's house you shall not covet your neighbor's wife male or female slave ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor when all this witness the thunder and lightning sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses you speak to us and we will listen but do not let God speak to us or we will die then Moses said to people don't be afraid our God for God has come only to test you and to put you to the fear of him upon so that you do not sin then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness and where God was may God grant us the wisdom to understand Amen. Thank you, Dr. Grace. So today, the Ten Commandments. Uh, Ten Commandments, I think, are familiar to most of us, uh, whether you've grown up or been around the church. Um, it's a lot of a lot, Ten Commandments are part of our culture. Uh, they're part of uh, most cultures. In fact, uh, kind of a little historical nugget is these commandments wouldn't have been unfamiliar to uh, ancient humans uh, during that time. A lot of cultures had very similar types of commandments, uh, you know, basic things like don't kill others, don't steal from each other, uh, listen to your parents, you know, things that kind of ethically are intuit to hu humanity. Um, the difference is, is that we respond to God's commandments uh, not out of obligation, uh, we, we respond out of uh, response to grace. And so when we, when we start this uh, text in the first uh, two, two verses, it says, And God spoke these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. So there's two elements of God's grace here in this passage that God starts with. He starts with first initiating a relationship with his people. Um, pagan gods... We do all the work to try to gain the God's favor, right? Even today, a pagan view of religious activity is to do as many good things as we can so that at the end it all works out for us, right? This, this idea of karma, more good than, than bad. Whereas here, God initiates the relationship. The, the Israelites did nothing. God comes to them and speaks words to them. He, he comes to them and, and, and brings his glory, brings his presence uh, to the people of Israel. So that's the first thing, and I, I think that's important, that God initiates a relationship with you before we do anything. Um, and so, and he wants and desires a relationship with you. And then the second thing is he reminds them of the fact that he brought them out of slavery, right? That he not only initiates a relationship with us, but he, but he does something for us. He brings us out of bondage, out of slavery. And we look at this, um, you know, spiritually, God brings us out of slavery through his son, Jesus, right? He sent his son Jesus to enter into slavery, to break the shackles and chains of sin and death so that we might live. And that's what God does for us, right? So he does two things for us that are beautiful things that any other pagan religion would never believe that a God of the universe would do, that they, that they would, one, initiate a relationship before we did anything, and two, actually free us from bondage and slavery. And that's what God reminds them of here in this text. And so then um, he gives them the, the, the Ten Commandments. The Decalogue is what they call it um, in biblical circles. Uh, it's actually in Hebrew. It's kind of ten uh, very short phrases uh, that, that they have. Uh, and sometimes it, it's referred to as the ten words. So if you ever hear, uh, if you're reading something biblically related, you hear the ten words or the Decalogue are referring to the Ten Commandments. 
And they're very simple and straightforward. They're, they're ten, 10 things that a society is, is, is called to function as, as a nation. In fact, Jesus sums them all up. And a few times we see in the Gospels, he sums them up as the greatest commandments is referred to, where he sums them up as love God and love others. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four are all about and connected to loving God. So we first, we love God. Uh, and and the, the first four walk us through what it means to, to love the Lord your God, the call to do that. And then the, the, the final six is to love others. So we're to love God and love others. And it's all about relationship. It's all about uh, relationship with our, our parents, relationship with other humans, not killing them, not stealing from them, not envying them, right? So it's about those relationships. Um, but I want to focus in on... Uh, I actually want to jump back into a previous verse in chapter 19. <laughs> and so we see um, in verse chapter 19, verse, um, verse 18. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. And the smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And so here's God entering into Mount Sinai right before he gives Moses the Ten Commandments. And he descended as in fire. And then we see later in chapter 20, at the end of chapter 20, it's described of the God's presence was, was thick darkness. And so you look at this idea, there's thick darkness, and I can't help but think of Lord of the Rings, uh, where uh, the, the eye, the all-seeing eye, it's like, darkness and fire and light, right? Um, it's almost like, I think, that imagery, although that kind of scene was bad, the bad guy, whereas this scene, it's the good guy. But that kind of scene where there's like darkness, there's, there's fire, there's light. I, uh, the Israelites even describe seeing thunder and lightning. So if you could picture with me for a moment that idea, that kind of environment. And then you think about this idea, and we just recited it in the Apostles' Creed. This idea of Jesus ascended, right, and then descended to hell. And if you look throughout, the, especially the New Testament, we see ascending and descending referring to Jesus. And what's he also referred to as in Scripture? He's referred to, to as the light. And so it wouldn't be a stretch to say here in this moment is the Christ, is Jesus. He's descending in fire, the presence of, of the living God is descending. Jesus was with God here at the giving of the Ten Commandments. And then we see in John chapter 1 that Jesus descended into all of humanity to show us what God's love is like. And he became, he embodied the Ten Commandments is what Jesus actually did. And then we see Jesus, especially in his Sermon on the Mount, teaching on the Ten Commandments, expounding on those, what it means to live as a society in God's kingdom. And Jesus embodied what it means to love God and love others. Jesus embodied love in our world. And that's really what these Ten Commandments are about. It's about embodying love for the entire world. This is what God's kingdom looks like. And Jesus descended into humanity through his incarnation and became love. And then we're called to respond. So we look at this, this chapter in, the, in Exodus. We see that the Israelites... Only Moses could enter into God's presence. And I think what God's doing here is he's actually describing for us what, what it takes for us to enter into God's presence. Now, we know none of us have kept the Ten Commandments perfectly. In fact, when you look at the Sermon on the Mount and you look at Jesus and how he kind of re-describes the Ten Commandments, we see like even uh, to commit adultery is a look on someone with lustfully in our heart, to to murder someone is just to be angry with someone, right? And so as we, as we draw those out, we get more specific detail and we go to the, to, to the lengths Jesus does with those, we realize that we've failed at probably all of the Ten Commandments at some point in our life. And so how do we then get to enter into God's presence if, if we can't keep the Ten Commandments? Well, it's because of Jesus, right? It's because Jesus came, he embodied all of those commandments, he entered and descended to death, as we just recited with our Apostles' Creed, defeated death and rose and re ascended to the Father so that we may enter into the presence of God for all of eternity. And so what is our response? God 
initiates relationship with us. God frees us from slavery, frees us from sin and death. And so then how do we reorder our lives to enter into his kingdom? What will be our response as we think about these Ten Commandments? Um, I want to read a quote uh, from from a, uh, a Jewish scholar by the name of Abraham Heschel that I think is relevant for us. He says, We must peer into the darkness, feel strangled and entombed by the hopelessness of living without God before we are ready to feel the presence of his living light. And so I think this, this idea of this darkness of God's presence and the light is in that darkness, the fire of Jesus is in that darkness, that we have to enter into the darkness. Moses had to enter into the darkness to, to enter into God's presence. And sometimes it's through the darkness of life that we've, we sense and we receive the light of Jesus. And I think this pandemic world, this time that we're going through, we, we enter into that darkness. We, in, we, we probably all felt strangled and tombed and hopelessness and just stressed out. And we, we've had these feelings. And I think all of us would probably experience the light of Jesus in the midst of that. Jesus has given us hope. Jesus has given us encouragement. Jesus has given us light. So what is our response to that? So how will we love God practically if we think about the Ten Commandments? It's, it's summed up. Jesus sums it up in loving God and loving others. How will we then love God? What will we do to reorder our lives to love God? How will we fall in love with God? How, what liturgies? I like, to, I like to use the word liturgy because there's liturgies all around us in our culture. And, and, and there's marketers all over our culture that want us to fall in love with their product, right? I don't know if you've ever been to the Disney store, but the Disney store, they're geniuses at this, right? My kids will walk me in there because they want to see their toys. But the way they design the walk, like you, you, there's not ever a straight walk in the Disney store. It's curved and they like make you see everything. By the time I get to the end of the Disney store, I've got five things that I want in my hands. Like I've fallen in love with items I didn't know I wanted, right? Um, and so marketers spend millions of dollars, right? Thinking about how they're gonna get you to fall in love and want their product. And so it's, I think it's the same with our relationship with God. What are we, what liturgies, what structures are we creating in our life that help us to fall in love with Jesus more and more and more? So is it like, it's, it could be as simple as maybe we create a space in our home that we, we have, you know, icons and little candles or, or prayer books or our Bible, right? Where it's, a, it's an intentional space and we walk by it, we can't help but see it and think about God and think, I need to go spend time with God there. Or, or it could be a, a number of things in our life. So what are we doing to help ourselves with that, or structuring our days. Like I, I like to structure my day on my phone and, and put in different things that I'm gonna do throughout the day. And, and sometimes I get to it and sometimes I don't, but the structure is there always calling me to spend time with God and fall deeper in love with Him. And then loving others. What, you know, questions today to ask is who do you hate? Who are you angry with? Uh, who have you failed to love? Uh, who is God calling you to love deeper and more? And so thinking about these things, how are we going to reorder our lives uh, to love God and love others? See, Jesus showed us what love was. He embodied love to the world, and he ultimately laid down his life for others. That's how he embodied love, ultimately. He gave his life for you and I. And so we're going to go to the table to remember how Jesus embodied love for us um, with his shed blood and in his life through the, the body and blood of Christ. And so this sacrament is a sacrament of, of that, of sacrifice of love. As we take this sacrament, we're actually acknowledging that we're entering into the embodiment of love as Jesus did with the whole entire world. And we're called to do that by the power of Jesus. The Apostle Paul tells us in the Scriptures that before we go to the Lord's table to confess any sin known or unknown to the living God. And so we want to do that uh, through a public confession and then a, a private confession as well. So I'm going to read a, a public confession and then we'll, I'll give a moment of silence for a uh, private confession. Let us confess now. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry. We humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the, the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. Each time you, you meet together to take and eat of it, to eat of his life, to eat of his embodiment of love as we eat together as a sacrament. In the same token, he knew that we wouldn't embody love perfectly, and he knew that there would need to be forgiveness as we enter into his presence. And so he shed his blood. And according to scriptures, for the forgiveness of our sins, he took the cup. This is the cup of my new covenant that you are forgiven. So no matter what you have done or left undone, you are forgiven today. And you are welcome at the Lord's table. So let me pray for the elements and then we'll take both together. God, we thank you uh, for your sacrifice. We thank you for living a life we, we couldn't live. Living a life as an example to us. Living a life embodying perfect love. God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. God, we thank you uh, for Jesus' sacrifice. May we receive that forgiveness today. May we give that forgiveness and grace to others. May we live that forgiveness to others in our life. May we truly love others as you loved us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us take together. Please stand and join us in singing a closing song, uh, Follow You.
Amen. Receive this morning's benediction. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you. And men and women everywhere love and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in grace and peace this morning.